Today on Alaskan Ballistics, hand loads, 10 millimeter, 155 grain, XTP. Welcome back to Alaskan Ballistics. My name is Chuck. I hope you are doing well today. Thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to join our MeWe page or support us on Patreon. Let's talk about what we did today. We loaded these 155 grain, 10 millimeter, brand new Winchester casings. And we loaded these up. Blue dot powder, max charge according to the Hornady manual. Just to see how fast we could get it. We shot it out of the Glock 29, the Glock 20, the Glock Model 40 with the 6-inch barrel, the 6.5-inch KKM barrel, and the 9-inch Lone Wolf barrel. And we're going to see what they do. A little disappointed in the reliability of this load. I had a couple of primers not fire on me. One on video, a couple off of video, and I had the Glock 20 jam a lot with this load. It didn't jam with any other load, so it's making me think it's my fault as the hand loader. If y'all think you know what the problem is in the comments, let me know. It's definitely not coming out of the uh, chamber. Failure to eject all the way. And so I haven't had that issue with the Glock 20 unless I put the Glock Model 40 barrel in it, which, you know, you're supposed to be able to do. Y'all let me know what you think. I think this thing just needs a break-in period, personally. Needs a few boxes of a hot full metal jacket ran through it. Y'all let me know what you think in the comments. I'm sure Crazy Scotsman's going to be all over that saying Glock stinks. But it feeds everything else fine. It fed my hand loads. I did a max charge with the CKB hardcast bullets that are the, the black lipstick gothic lipstick rounds that I'd done a video on before. I did a max charge of those and it ran fine and it ran fine with several other things I shot. So it's got to be something with this round. Maybe I didn't crimp it tight enough and, you know, it overexpanded in the chamber. And when it overexpanded in the chamber, it didn't eject fully all the way because it wasn't crimped tight enough. I don't know. You guys let me, let me know and let me know what you think. Block 40 fed them well. Block 29 fed them well. No jams. So... Right now, they're going in the ammo storage, but they might just get shot up so that I can have brass for other projects. Without further ado, we'll get to the video. 155 grain XTP, Glock, 10 millimeter, 9 inch barrel. We are shooting over the chronograph in a new location. It's in a very safe spot. Got a big hillside in the middle of these woods, big old huge mountain. So here we go. Well, that was not a good sign. Got a light strike on the primer, first one, here we go. 16, eight, 68, wow. 1656, 1670, 1664. Fairly consistent. Let's see how the six and a half inch barrel does. Here we got the six and a half inch KKM barrel. Here we go, five rounds. 1598, 1596, 1510, 1575. So, a little bit less like you would expect. Here we are with the stock Glock 40. Here we go. 1552, 1562, 1537, 1569. 1525. A lot more recoil without that 22 pound recoil spring. Recoil spring. So, about what you expect. A little velocity loss there. Here I am with the world's ugliest Glock 20. Here we go. 1475. 1437. I got a jam. Hmm. Didn't kick it all the way out. Bent the brass pretty bad. It's weird. Last but not least, Glock 29. Here we go. 1392, 1381, 1378, 1373, 1378 again. Not bad. Check out the add-up slide. 
Then we will do our penetration test. Well, here is our add up slide. Thank you again for watching the video this far. I thought the numbers are pretty good. 655 foot pounds in a Glock 29 is nothing to, to scoff at, you know. So I think they're pretty good. A little concerned that the load might not be reliable. I know what's causing the primary issue, I think, but I'm not sure about the jamming issue only in the G20. That G20 seems to be tighter with that finish on it. So maybe it's that. I don't know. You guys tell me what you think in the comments. This week's shout out goes to LW Road. Go check out LW Road. Great 10 millimeter guy here in Alaska. Go check him out. If you want to know about all the new 10 millimeter guns, he's the guy to go to. All right, here we go. 10 millimeter Glock 29 XTP hand loads. 155 grain. Got a bologna pack, four layers of denim, seven water jugs behind it. Let's see if we can catch this. Nice and wet. Oh yeah. Nice. All right. Looks like the bullet started peeling left. There's the hole. And came out this side here, peeled right there. And I don't see it anywhere else, so it might be in this fourth jug here. Kind of peeled a little bit. Hope it didn't like bounce off the side or something. Yeah, it looks like we lost that bullet. Looks like we lost that bullet. You can see on the baloney track we had a good hole. It's kind of towards the center top of it. Yeah, we had it facing like this. So it hit in the center and started deflecting a little bit. There's the, the entry hole right there. So it hit left center and deflected a little bit. I hate it when that happens. So I did find the bullet from the first attempt. It hit out the side. I'm going to try to get a little bit more center hit. But look at this. I mean, that's just pretty, that's just pretty awesome. He really flattened out. Good enough penetration. Definitely what you want. Here we are, 10 feet. Take two, Glock 29, 10 millimeter, 155 grain XTP with blue dot. My hand loads, here we go. Baloney pack, we have denim on top of it, seven water jugs back there. Let's see what we got. That time I think we got it more center. Let's see. That time I think we got it more center. Let's see. Oh yeah, we got a much better hit here. Baloney's still on the table. You can see it went straight through there, started expanding out, blew things apart, blew the first jug that was taped to apart, blew the other jug off the table. See right there, top in the middle, top in the middle, four. It bounced out. There's a hole off of the fourth one. So it's either in the fourth one, I think it is, but it poked a hole in the back of the fourth one. It did not poke one in the fifth, so it might have hit the fifth and bounced back in. There it is. So four water jugs for the Glock 29. That's two tests for the Glock 29, one with a little bad hit and the other with a good hit right in the middle. Man, look at that. Perfect looking bullet. We'll take that home and weigh it. Glock 20, 155 grain XTP, hand loads, blue dot powder. Here we go. All right. Let's see what we 
got. Pretty center hit. Poked out the third one. A little poke into the fourth one. Just a leak. I don't know that it actually went in or not. See, this one blew up. Yep, bullet's in the bottom of the third one, and it is jacket separated. So, I don't know if you guys can see that right there. Jacket separated. Flattened out pretty good. It's the one thing about speed. Speed can make a bullet underperform. So, a really good load in the Glock 29 for defensive purposes. You know, not so great in the model 20 it's probably going to be worse than the model 40 with the kkm barrel all right 6.5 inch kkm barrel Glock model 40 155 grain xdp here we go Woo. right back in my face i think of the brass hit me in the forehead So we definitely destroyed this thing. Hit just about dead center. Right there. Some milk jug off the table. Went into the third one. And it poked a pretty good hole in the fourth one. So it penetrated deeper than the Glock 20. I expected that because of the extra speed, but I expected it to be in more pieces too. Yep. And got another jacket separation into the fourth jug with jacket separated that's what the extra speed did for us there that one's into the fourth jug that's definitely the Glock model 40 we'll get these back to the house weigh them measure them let you know what's up all right let's check out how much these bullets weigh this is one of the two takes I did on the Glock 29 so 144.5 not too bad and the other one I did on the Glock 29, 145.8. Looks like expansion here on the first Glock 29. We're at 0.63 that direction. 0.67 that direction. The first Glock 29 bullet. We're at... 0.64 that direction 0.67 that direction here's one of the Glock 20 or 20 or 40 also 144 total grains that's not bad just the core is 111 just the jacket is 33.1 and this bullet overexpanded. Looks like we have 0.7 for this direction. And this direction might be really wide. It's like 0 0.8, 281, somewhere in there. Can't slip it on me. All right. I think this is the Glock 20, if I'm not mistaken. The other one was the Glock 40. I could be wrong. You guys can tell me in the comments which way I. Weight them. Which order I weighed them in. 139.2 total weight. Just the jacket is 33.3. Just the core is 106.1. And this one, 0.81, looks like that direction. 0 0.7, 0 0.776, 775, that direction. Not too bad. All right, guys, tell me what you think about this load in the comments. Not my best 10 millimeter load ever.
Definitely has some issues with some light strikes on the primers and jamming on the Glock 20. Let me know what you think. Guys, thanks for watching the video. And don't forget to support us on Patreon, MeWe. Like, share, and subscribe on all the videos, all gun videos on YouTube. Like, share, and subscribe so you can help the algorithm and help more gun content get out to more people and more pro Second Amendment content get out to more people. All that being said, t-shirts in the description below. God bless. Take care. We will see you at the range.